Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? Um, having a little bit different kind of morning. Um, I think because I got a whole bunch of sleep on Sunday. Um, yes, definitely Sunday. Um, and today is actually Tuesday morning. Got a fair amount. <clears throat> fair amount of sleep, uh, I guess, Sunday night, especially, too. Um, I'm up, up very early. I imagine that I'll probably be pretty tired this evening, but we'll see. Anyway, um, by the way, if you're eating a lot of dark greens, you're going to have an easier time getting up earlier. And if you're not overeating at night... If you eat lighter meals at night, you'll get get to get up earlier as well. Just as a note, general note, that there are things, there are foods that cause you to sleep in more than, yeah. I can actually mention that a bit more in detail right now, in fact. Um, yeah, why not, before I get to some other stuff here in a bit. If you um, have heavier meat, so pork and beef and you have um, actually I'll specify those guys pork and beef maybe ice cream maybe some dairy but especially pork and beef or any heavy meats you need like lamb also be in there um, and you also eat a lot of food so of course pizza hamburgers but a lot of it um that stuff can definitely, if you have a whole bunch of, if you, have a, if you eat late, if you eat very late and you eat a whole bunch, you're going to sleep in. <laughs> or you don't want to sleep in. Um, but if you, have, if you have a light dinner, if you have fish or eggs, um, vegetables and stuff like that, low GI stuff especially, you're going to wake up nice and early. Sugar tends to make you get up at night more easily. Um, anyway. So, I won't have, I don't know, we'll just see how long this video goes. I'm not sure. But, uh, a few general things here going on. Well, I don't know if it's so much, so much of a vlog, this video, but it's, I guess it's one of those, the first thing I was going to mention after this stuff is, um, um, yeah, I just, I like, have to go out and say it, go ahead and say it, you know, if you, you can, you can buy movies at Redbox, uh, locations in case you didn't know, this might be kind of a captain of the obvious statement, but, um, you often can buy a movie for four bucks and then get another one for like two bucks. So you get two movies for six bucks and you own them and they don't have a super nice cover. It's true, but who really gives a rip about the covers? Do you know how much money I spent recently at Fred Meyer just buying six movies it was in excess of, I think, 70 something dollars. No joke. And I was trying to find some movies to watch that I hadn't seen before. From now on, I'm just doing that at Redbox. Even if the movie I want to see is not available. And if I can't find it on Netflix, and if I just want to own it. That's what I'm going to do. Um, Fred Meyer charges way too much. As a good example I'm talking about here, The Conjuring 3 costs in excess of like 26 bucks. Conjuring 3 costs, you know, in comparison, 4 bucks on Netflix. You do the math. That's I'm saving over 20 bucks right there. Just buying Conjuring 3. But there's nothing wrong with Fred Meyer. It's just that they charge through the nose for their, their movies. Whatever the Redbox does not. And what are you getting for all that extra money? Are you getting a nice video cover? And that's really about it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway. Um, pro tip there. Okay, so... Um, and the dollar store. The dollar store is underrated. They really do have a lot of great stuff. Um, I don't know about a lot is what I'd use. Well, I don't know, they actually do have a fair amount of great stuff for a buck. 
and um, I need to take advantage of that more often. For it kind of depends on what it is you're looking for if you want to save money. But I mean, everything they have is a buck. If you just want to get some El Cheapo toys that do the job for you know they're great toys, little bouncy balls, and you maybe you want to get they even have screwdrivers and tools and stuff there, stationery. And of course the goodies, but they also have other things as well. Mag- I saw magnifying glass there. So another pro tip there. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys ever do this, but um, I looked at the crime map of where I'm at right, living right now versus other places I've been. To be honest, I've, I'm trying to think of it in my entire life if I've ever been the victim of a, of a crime. So this is one way I know that the Lord is watching out for me, by the way. Um, but, yeah, God's watching out for me, but uh, I believe he is. I've had something stolen at Central Washington once. Yeah, that was my own fault kind of thing, but that was dumb. <laughs> But I remember what happened, I think, a little bit. Uh, I've had a bike stolen on my, on my mission, actually. Yeah, that was interesting. And then... Um, so theft. I've been a victim of theft, sure, in my life, but only a, a few times, really. Uh, I've never had any of my things broken into. Never anything smashed. Um, I've been the victim of a a scam. I know what that feels like. I've been scammed before. That's probably the biggest thing that's ever happened to me is is that um, that issue. And I think maybe in a video I mentioned that before. Maybe not. but, um, But let me see. Hmm. In the entire time I've lived in north of Seattle, kind of Everett, between Seattle and Everett, basically, um, after after college, I I've never, in terms of anything, you know, especially local you know, kinds of crime, nothing's ever happened. Um, will everything, anything ever happen? Very doubtful. Oh, well, let's see. I've had neighbor issues. I might have mentioned before. Maybe not. Um, before I made YouTube videos, um, there was a place I lived at where we had a guy that was kind of a real pain to deal with. Um, <laughs> in a house nearby where I lived. And actually, he, he was... Um, actually kicked out or he was he was um, evicted or something like that not evicted but he was he had to leave his place I don't know it was uh, so I I was in the right definitely in that regard and um, yeah so I'm looking at these maps and I'm asking myself, what do they really matter if I've never really been the victim of a crime? For the most part, I live in minor theft. And that minor theft was, were things that, um, other than, other than being scammed, I mean, that one time. Um, this, these are the times where I think someone stole stuff from me. That was all well before I finished college. That was all in earlier times. And, um, so, I mean, there, there's things that happen. It's just, the question is, um, are you around, I mean, I, you know, I lived in a place that was in Everett that was a little bit worse crime-wise at one time, but nothing ever happened because it was a gated, 
um, kind of a area, condo area, apartments, condo apartments, I don't know. So if any crime would have ever happened, for, for the most part, it would have been within the tenants there. Unless someone can climb over the fence and stuff, I don't know, but then everybody locked the doors and stuff, so. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I they had this thing on the crime map where it was green through red. Red was the worst on this, uh, yeah, police crime map. I noticed that everywhere, pretty much where you had a downtown core or where you had a lot of lower income housing or you had heavy industry they're always more red colored and then if they were if there were a upper class housing there you know mansions and stuff um, and also places where there were less people but also a strong police presence um, Hmm. Well, maybe some other factors that went into that. Um, places that just had a lot of very upstanding citizens that were very... Um, I'm looking mainly at things like, well, it's all crimes, but you have certain kinds of communities and areas where the, because of the way the people are. Um, I'm avoiding talking about race here or somewhat, but um, I'll just put it this way. Certain, um, for the most part, there are certain subcultures within races, um, ethnicities. It depends on the area, of course, but there are certain places where people just don't commit crimes for the most part, very, very rarely. And then there are other places where because of the Someone's ethnicity, of major ethnicities in the area. There's going to be a lot more crime. But the funny thing about that all is, even though some people look at that stuff a lot, what matters more than race is actually um, the things like um, the socioeconomic uh, status of a person. Are they des destitute or not? And, and it's more especially in terms of if they're going to steal something or not. And also the drug drug uh, issues, you know. But also, there's a factor that comes into play with regard to single parent families and broken families. And also, um, things like what are what's the what's the general more moral vibe of a area? Are, are people going to church on Sunday, at least churches that are doing good things for their people, you know. Um, so these, these are some of the things that factor into whether or not an area has high crime or not. So I think race is definitely overplayed, and it's often still controversial in how you talk about it. Uh, but um, it's more about what the home life is like in the family, the family have enough money a lot of times. So, so looking at the place I'm at right now, and actually it's kind of in the medium to slightly more. Di uh, I wouldn't say it's dangerous. It's not dangerous. This is actually a nice area. This is a low crime little area that is our. Uh, little cul-de-sac. Um, which is a different cul-de-sac than I have lived in earlier, which was actually the last last place I was at was even safer, but the house was falling apart. But um, the place I'm at right now, it's not there's no no issues. Just to give you an idea how um, awesome where I live at is is on my the entire cul-de-sac where I live, I have not experienced any negative issues from anybody like none zero they're all great all great people as far as i can tell nobody's up to nobody's up to no good now 
just a, a block away, there's a, there's a guy that I've overheard. Well, there's a few people that can be a little bit loud at night, but it's pretty far away. And there's a guy that operates mechanical engines and things, but he's far enough away that it's not an issue. But he does those things late at night. Sometimes he fires up a so in, in car engines or without mufflers late at night. That's got to be an issue. So I imagine the people have complained about him before. And I imagine they still will in the future as long as he does this stuff, especially late at night. What, by the way, I've, I've uh, with regard to all things engine and, and mechanical or that's, that are loud, um, I've had issues before in previous locations I've lived at where um, someone was either up early in the morning and like getting their car going, but it was really loud, or I've had issues with, um, yeah, auto auto stuff. Um, but it was more early in the morning. It's like in the seven to eight p.m. range, and I often was still try to get some sleep, and that was annoying. Um, but I lived through it. I'm a tough guy. Whatever. So I know what that's like. But, um, yeah, things are actually pretty okay. So I don't always put a whole lot of stock in that, uh, crime thing. It, it often has more to do with, I think, the chances of getting something stolen if you leave something out. But, um, violent crime and stuff, no, that's, that doesn't happen very often, at least why not? Or just doesn't happen. I mean, it's so it's so it's so much more likely for things to be um, burglarized or stolen that are a little bit easier to get a hold of. Carjackings, again, not a problem. I mean, it's not, just not a problem specifically where I live. Now that there are places not too far away, of course, where I saw like I was like, oh, crime here is pretty bad. But it's sort of funny how when you're in these high crime areas, it's so unlikely that you're going to be the victim of a crime unless you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. That rhymes, by the way. The Rainier Valley in Seattle um, and, you know, Beacon Hill areas and stuff, it's one of the worst areas in the Puget Sound other than, you know, Salishan or certain parts of South Dakota, Lincoln District in Tacoma and um, Taquilla and stuff. And whenever I've been there, nothing's ever happened. Nothing. I mean, I, you know, there were some really awesome small or Ethiopian or Filipino restaurants I remember going to, taking horn, lesson, horn lessons in the general area. And I'm teaching a student, a piano student in the area right now. And, um, just don't see it. So I guess it also depends on um, if you are living there or if you're just visiting there. It depends on uh, how long you're there. It depends on what time of day you're talking about because a lot of crimes happen, as you probably guessed, late at night, early in the morning. So, um, but I wanted to talk about some other stuff, maybe. Um, my hope in Hollywood has been slightly redeemed by watching Conjuring 3 recently. Like I mentioned, I just got it you know, cheap at Redbox. It was actually pretty decent. It was actually pretty good. Um, kept my interest. Um, I think Conjuring 2 and Conjuring 1 were somewhat better, you know. But Conjuring 3 was still great. Pretty great. Still pretty good. Um... And I did see a few scary movies for Halloween, so that was good. And, um, oh, let's see what else was, you know, going on. I don't know. Um, I've wondered at times, okay, this is the last thing I'll talk about here. So I guess I, I realized that it's, it's always a, a bad idea. No, seriously. There are certain subjects, I suppose, where if you if you look at them or you can comment, especially if you comment, especially if you comment on these things on YouTube, 
that there are certain subjects that you're going to get a much better chance of getting responses to things. Much better. Um, <laughs> so if you comment, if I comment, if I comment, you know, whatever, on a subject like popular music. By popular music, I'm specifically referring to, in this case, Top 40 Pop. Um, so, even more recent than Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake. They're, they might be considered old, you know, in regard to the turn of thoughts that you often have for people that listen to Top 40 Pop, religiously. So, and this is even also post-Justin Bieber. This is after Justin Bieber, so this, this is after Miley Cyrus, even. This is probably even Taylor Swift is closer on to maybe what we're talking about, but so, uh, and probably, you know, Beyonce is a little bit old perhaps by this point, but, <laughs> oh, I don't know. So I guess Billy Eilish would be a good example of who I'm talking about. If you make a comment about their character or their music or anything like that, um, the more recent the pop star, the more that you're going to get uh, comments back, whether or not they're positive or negative. So if you like somebody, if you comment on something you like them, chances are you'll get a positive comment back. If you don't like someone, there's a very good chance that you'll get a negative comment back. This is, and, 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 um, and who will be responding to your comment? What general age range will they be? And what gender will they be? I mean, I really have this step boiled down to a science. It's never, it's never the guys. The guys, they don't give a crap. They're like, that's nice. Very few exceptions to that. Very, very few. It's not a guy thing to want to respond to other people's comments about popular, popular music. Unless it's like, oh, that's cool, or uh, that's, I appreciate your comment, or... It's kind of, it's not really, but it, hey, if you talk about the certain other subjects that guys will respond to more readily <laughs> in, in a maybe negative way, but it's just not done. I mean, it's just, it's just, so if you want, if you want to understand men versus women, this is one of the ways that you can see the, the clear difference <laughs> in terms of, especially teenagers and younger adults, younger <clears throat> yeah, so it's the women, and it's the ones that follow pop music religiously, religiously and they're going to be young, and they're going to be idiots. Let's just face it, this, these kinds of pe people I'm talking about are not the brightest bulbs in the, in the light bulb, whatever. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not especially intelligent, and that's okay. These you have exceptions. Some of these women that respond to music, comments about pop music, they're not dumb. They're not, you know, but they're they're not going to. She's only speaking. We're not, talk, we're not talking about IQs over one twenty. We're just we're just not. Um, it's you know you know you know when you're talking to somebody who has truly has a higher IQ. Um, on on YouTube. But if they're younger, they'll also be fairly apparent as well. Fairly, not always. Anyway, I can expect to, one, one can expect comments if they're negative. More along the lines of defending defending um, a pop singer, pop star. And do the pop stars really care or not? Probably not. Probably not. The only thing they care about, well, you can, you can guess what they care about. Well, you know, it's just, I thought, you know, I don't know. So, mentioning all this, do I still think it's worth it to make comments where I just get negative comments back? Well, if it's only little, little tarts, or if it's only these infantile um, 
mentally more infantile um, women, right? I should say almost like girls. And that's, that's the killer, though. That's the thing. It's like, if you don't, if they're like teenagers, I don't want it. And that's, again, that's a YouTube issue. It's not my deal. It's not my issue. I don't know how old they are. You try to figure it out, but if you can't figure it out, you can't figure it out. But um, if they want to be pills, you know, it's like, it's like, you can try to talk to them, explain your original train of thought but if you can't do that you can't do that and they're just going to pout and go on the merry way and you're going to block them and you're going to whatever you go on your merry way and it's usually what happens and if there are any exceptions to that bless their hearts because they are amazing for just not being idiots it was the same thing when I was younger most girls I knew I didn't want to date You know, they're just, they're idiots. I guess that's, apparently that's still the case. I still hope for a time when, I don't know. You guys probably know of my hopes regarding other people on some level already. But, um, again, do I still think it's worth it to leave comments like that? Yeah, I do. I'm a, I'm a musician. I want people... To understand what good music is. Good music is not that crap. Now there's some music. That is top 40 pop. That. Isn't bad to listen to. I mean. Doesn't take away from the soul. But it's just. It's not. It's not. Ennobling. And it's not intellectually stimulating and it just doesn't help you grow at all for the most part but if it's not morally bad then it's fine but I don't, I don't really I don't really feel the need to defend music unless it does something for you that's positive positive. and I wish these little tarts would understand this why do I refer to these women as little tarts and other things like that are disparaging like that well doesn't really matter how old they are in a way when somebody presents themselves on YouTube in such a way again I mentioned this many times before where they are looking for a fight and you are trying to be peaceable with them over a few to several comments and they just won't stop they have to get the last word in that's that they're, they're that's what I'm talking about. That's the problem, YouTube commenters. And that's what I'm talking about. And you don't know how to you don't you don't know how old they are. If you suspect that they're younger or that they're more sensitive, you go, Okay, have a nice day, bye. And just be kind of cutesy and that's probably one of the best ways of handling it. But if they're I Anyway, anyway, I mentioned about enough about this stuff, so more in a bit, I'll probably just be up and then just deal with it. <laughs> okay. Catch us later, take care. Bye.